steps that strides forward. 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 Hello, and welcome to this episode of Strides Forward, the podcast where we share stories from the endurance sport of marathon and ultramarathon running, one woman at a time. From world-class record breakers to everyday extraordinary adventure seekers, you'll get an inside look at why and how women from around the world keep lacing up and running far. Women like Shirley. Uh, my name is Shirley Musia Khabu. I am from Botswana. I currently live in Khaburoni with uh, my family of four. So that's me, my husband, and my two sons. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. And if you're returning, then welcome back. My name is Cherie Louise Turner, and I am your host and producer. This episode is part of our first season, and the focus of this season is stories that have a strong connection to South Africa's Comrades Marathon, which is actually an ultramarathon. Comrades is 90 kilometers, or roughly 56 hilly miles. It's the oldest and largest ultra-running event in the world. The race celebrates its 100-year anniversary in 2021, and over 27,000 runners were registered for the 2020 event. For athletes like Shirley, Comrades did not figure into her plans when she started running. I got into long-distance running uh, after my kids. I, I, after my first born, I had put on a little bit of weight, and I was looking for ways to actually shed it off. And then sometime that year, they announced that there was a, the city marathon was coming here. So we were going to have uh, our first Khaburoni marathon. So that was like around 2010. So my sister, my siblings were really excited and they were like, okay, let's do it. Uh, let's go do a 10 kilometers. We signed up for the 10K. And uh, mind you, at this point, we had no clue how much effort it required to prepare for it. So what we did is, besides going to the gym, I would once in a while, you know, take around the block. The concept of also the distance wasn't quite coming together. Shirley's only previous experience in running had been short track events that she did in her youth. But it it had never translated to that much of long distance running. I think the furthest that gone was like 3,000 meters. And uh, that was way, way back. So 3,000 meters, three kilometers. And it was so long ago. It wasn't experience Shirley could lean on to get her through this longer challenge. But she was enthusiastic and she'd been working out at the gym and she'd taken some jaunts around the block. The race day came and then we went and ran it and then, oh my God, it was just such a terrible experience. After finishing it, it was pains all over, pains all over. The next day I couldn't even get to work. I just called my boss and said, you know what, I can't even, the only thing I can lift is my cell phone to talk to you to say that I can't come to work. So Shirley had met her goal, but she had suffered mightily for it. But that moment was very special because after that I when the pains were gone and everything, I still thought that it was really, really, really a nice experience and I would love to do it. And we started training again for the next year. And there it is. On the flip side of painful challenges can oftentimes rest those satisfying feelings of having faced and finished a hard thing. Carrying her enthusiasm forward, Shirley rallied her coworkers for weekly walks, working up to five kilometers or just over three miles. The 10K race would get canceled the next year, and Shirley's coworkers would stop attending the outings that she had instigated. But Shirley didn't stop, and when the race returned after its one year hiatus, she was ready to go again. She'd found a new training partner and a local friend, and she had been eager to get back in shape again after having her second child. When the marathon returned, we went and ran it, and then we ran the 10K, and this time it was actually bearable. I I finished okay, and I thought the time was also decent, so after that we made even bigger goals. We're like, oh, okay, now let's aim to actually do this in less than an hour. The duo of Shirley and her partner in training continued to gain momentum 
And the two women started regularly running 10 or 12 kilometers each weekend together to stay fit with an eye toward getting a bit faster. And they wanted to do more than one event a year. So they found another 10K nearby that they could do before their annual local race. It was an amazing race, actually. That was the first year we actually ran under an hour. So it was quite a milestone for us. So the next weekend we were back in Haburoni and then now our city marathon and we were doing our 10K there. And uh, we ran our 10K after running our 10K. Good results. I think I even, yeah, we, it was good results. Still under one hour and even better. Running had become a regular part of Shirley's life. The original post-pregnancy weight loss goals had come and gone. And now she had other motivations, like continuing to stay strong and fast. She did not, however, have aspirations of running ultras. Um, we had this thing like afterwards we'll just share on Facebook that oh this is what we're doing this weekend and so on I had this friend who always said every single time I would post something he would comment and say you know what I actually run with people who run comrades and at that point we thought comrades was was a goal that is far far away from people in Botswana we just didn't think that there were people so close to us who were able to run it it's not so much the physical distance to the race that feels far. Botswana and South Africa are neighboring countries, after all. But rather, it's the magnitude of comrades that makes it feel worlds away. It's a long race, and it's a huge production. I would laugh about it. I mean, just the thought of the thing in the distance was just daunting, you know. I remember the first time I did, I uh, ran a quick Google. I was like, okay, comrades, 90 cases. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> well, <laughs> out of my league. So Comrades was off the table. For now, that is. But that friend kept making comments on Facebook about running with people who did Comrades, and he kept inviting Shirley and her training partner to join his club for training runs. And one day they did. They showed up for a weekly Wednesday night 10K group run. One time we, we went and joined the 10K, me and my friend, and... Uh, it, ha it so happened that the 10K was actually a speed session. At this point, we, we had no idea what was a speed session and what was not. So we just show up and run. If people are running fast, we'll also run fast. If they're running slow, we'll also run slow. So we joined them the Wednesdays, and we kept joining the Wednesdays. And at this point, it was actually mostly men. I think we were probably the first, the, the two ladies. The female duo kept showing up to these weekday group runs. But this was a team of long-distance runners, runners who were preparing for marathons and ultras, and they were very eager to encourage the female additions to the group to try out running longer distances. And we'd never run beyond 12, so we thought, there's no way we're going to run anything more than 12 kilometers. So one weekend, uh, my friend was out of town, so I then decided, okay, maybe let me just take up this invitation. I went and joined them running at 21. So we ran from one end of the city to the other, then turning back to where we started. I remember as we were running, I was just thinking, oh my God, where are we going? when are we going to stop and take a break? I just could not imagine that you could run more than 10 kilometers without stopping. So we get to the 10.5 mark and they, they had to fetch some water somewhere so that we'll come fetch the water and then... Uh, a drink and then we start again so we get to the um, so we get there I I was like catching my breath so fast waiting you know looking forward to like okay can you find somewhere to sit so that you think oh no we quickly drank and then we were off again and I remember I finished I managed to finish actually but after that I got into my car I drove home got home got into the bathroom locked the bathroom and then I just lay down on the cold tiles because I just thought my body just needed to cool down. I could not imagine how these guys were, could do this every single weekend. Because it wasn't just the distance these runners were up against. And uh, by the way, our temperatures are like, in some, our temperatures can go as high as 40 degrees Celsius. In Fahrenheit, that's 104 degrees. 
So Shirley had completed her first half marathon run, 21 kilometers or 13.1 miles. So of course, the next milestone she was encouraged to tackle was a full marathon, exactly double the half, 26.2 miles or 42.2 kilometers. And on a long weekend group training run, Shirley thought she'd done just that. But her watch had mismeasured the distance and she'd missed the mark by a few kilometers. Nevertheless, it had been a really tough run. Tough enough for Shirley to seek the cool comforts of her tiled bathroom floor again. And tough enough that she wasn't too enthusiastic about trying to do a full marathon again. For a while, at least. So Shirley stuck to those half marathons, those roughly two-hour runs that not long ago had stretched the limits of what she thought she'd ever do. To remember, just a few years earlier, a 10K had laid her out for the entire next day. And now she could run 21 kilometers, no problem. And when a half marathon race series started, Shirley was there. She was enjoying herself. She was challenged but having fun. And she had become a part of the running community. And even though she didn't have an interest in running marathons and ultras, people in her running community, people who were her friends and training buddies, they did. So when comrades came around again, it wasn't just a big, faraway event anymore. It was something she had personal connections to, and she was eager to follow the action. We used to have this group whereby people would just commentate and tell you where, where the runners are, like the local runners are, and so on and so on. And I thought it was really nice. And this was happening in a WhatsApp group. So it was a really, there was a, such a nice touch to it. And when I'd never experienced comrades in that way. So just sitting there watching this chart and this person telling you about winners, telling you about all the stars on the lineup and so forth. And this is somebody sitting somewhere in Botswana, <laughs> just going through his laptop and uh, his um, the, the TV and so on and just updating everyone. So I really, really got interested into it, learning about comrades, when is the, when are the entry days and so forth. And I remember at that point, I was like, you know what, I think I should run this next year. The lure of comrades, the history, the challenge, the thousands of people, the magnificent aura of it, and the curiosity of being out on the road for so many hours all had Shirley reconsidering her decision to not run any further than a half marathon. Uh, when the time came and they opened up for registration, I threw my name in there. I'd never run a marathon, but I threw in my name. I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Shirley had made her commitment official. And while she hadn't yet run the full distance of a marathon, she'd be running one soon, because to stand at the start of Comrades, you do need to qualify by doing a marathon between September and April before the race. And as a reminder, Comrades takes place in June. Shirley was signed up for the 2015 Comrades, and at that time, she had to finish her qualifying marathon within five hours. That time has since dropped to four hours, 50 minutes because of the growing popularity of Comrades. This qualification is to help ensure that all Comrades runners have a fighting chance to finish within the very strict cutoff time of 12 hours. So Shirley's first step was to run a marathon and she relied on her running experience to date to get her through. I think coming from a sprinting background, so most of the time I really didn't have the discipline of, uh, you know, starting out slow. So I'd just go for it when you start. So I remember I started with the strong runners. I know I could hold that for like 21, but I didn't know what would happen beyond that. So we went for it for up until 21. And then after 21, obviously, yeah. I think I managed to go up until 30, and then after 30, oh my God, everything was just going. Thing. Remember at this point, I didn't even know. I had never run beyond 21, so I didn't know that you actually had to even consider nutrition. I just thought, you know what, I ran well for 21 kilometers with water, so I'm just going to stick to that. That's what I know, so I don't want to change anything. Can you imagine? But anyway, I think the stubborn girl in me just kept saying, you know, keep going. Four hours, eight minutes later, I reached the finish line. 
With this marathon experience, Shirley was starting to understand what it would take to get through a 90-kilometer challenge. The next day I was just in pain, all muscle pain and everything. But uh, fast forward a few weeks later, I was quite happy and thinking that I can do this again. <laughs> I can do this again. So, But uh, now my worries were that, you know what, if I'm to prepare for comrades, really, I have to do things differently. I have to also learn how to slow down for this race. Shirley was all in, and she followed the guidance of her teammates who'd run comrades before. She ran hilly events with them to prepare for the grueling climbs of comrades. She ran her first ultras, a 50K and the 56-kilometer, or 35-mile, two oceans, which is another of the great ultra races in South Africa. Shirley learned to eat and hydrate properly. She learned how to slow down her pace to be sustainable over the full distance. And after some painful experiences with her feet, she dialed in on the shoes she'd rely on for the big day. And she got tips and advice and shared stories with teammates. And then, all that remained, after months of training, prep races, talking, testing equipment, figuring out pacing and eating and drinking was to get to the start line. I remember us sitting down and going through the emotions of the start. I was sitting there, I was like thinking, oh my God, what have I done? Can I really do this? Fast forward, before we knew it, the gun went off and we set out to run our first comrades. The long journey of comrades began. Shirley had no set plans to run with anyone else, but several teammates from Botswana were out on the road too, including her friend, Ben. Ben caught up with me and then we ran together. And this was also a saving grace because they really, really sort of spend their time really trying to make me comfortable and help me. And uh, we ran, I think a good 20 to 30 kilometers together and then the band would normally start off slow and finish off strong. So when it was time for him to go, he's like, okay. At some point as we were approaching the, the 55s and so on, I was starting to also cramp. And Ben was getting stronger and stronger. At some point he's like, okay, I think when we get to 60, I'm going to leave you. But he left me with some instructions. <laughs> he was like a proper parent. He's like, okay, make sure that you you don't waste time. If you walk, just balance it out with, with the run, walk runs, walk runs. And... Yes, uh, you, cramping, cramping is inevitable. So when it happens, just walk a little bit and keep going. Sage advice. Keep moving forward. And it sounds so simple. If it weren't for the heat and the hills and the exhaustion of having already run 38 miles and having another 18 to go, and now Shirley was facing it all by herself. The moment he left, I think just the emotion just, I don't know, I was overcome with emotions and I don't know, it was that point, you know, where you're like reaching your breaking point. I remember cramping and I was thinking, oh no, I think, you know what, if I get to 70, I'll be done because that'll be such an achievement. I've never run that far. I mean, like, I've come all this way. 70 is good enough. Of course, look at that. She'd already gone further than she'd ever gone before. Why continue? It had been a monumental day already. Especially since cramps are a totally valid reason to pack it in. They're excruciating. And if you're cramping, you can't run. Good enough. 70 kilometers is a great accomplishment. And Shirley had her husband out along the course meeting her to provide support. And he had a car. She could just get in and call it a day. So I had my cell phone on, so took out my cell phone and I sent a text message to my husband. It's like, okay, I'm cramping, where are you? With exclamation marks and all sorts of things. So <laughs> put the phone back and then started uh, walking, sobbing a little bit. Even in a crowd as large as you find at Comrades, running for so long can be a very lonely endeavor. It's also prime time to go down dark mental and emotional spirals. You're physically drained, you're psychologically drained, you're emotionally tapped. 
Why, oh why, did you ever sign up for this? As I was walking, a friend of mine, another friend comes from behind from the club. He comes, Larry, he's like, oh, hi, Charles, how are you? And, you know, there are people in life who are just ever cheerful. And when somebody that cheerful just <laughs> comes and speaks to you, there's no way you can continue being grumpy and weepy. So um, yeah, my mood changed. And focusing on the heat and the pain and the jumping in the car and the being okay with going 70 kilometers all disappeared. Shirley came back to the moment at hand and with a little help from a friend, got back into the game of focusing on how she was going to keep moving forward. So I was like, oh, I'm cramping. And so he's like, okay, so he took it easy. He's like, okay, um, when do you cramp? Do you cramp when you go up or when you run down? So I was like, oh, no, when I run up. So I was like, okay, that's fine. Then let's go together because I'm also not that strong going up. So I'm, I'm walking the hills. So let's go together. Yeah, that really, really changed the outlook of the race. I just all of a sudden just became positive and everything. And Shirley learned the great art of looking to intermediate rewards to break up the distance and keep you moving forward down the road. When you get to a water station, you also ask what they have behind the thing in the counter because you will get some goodies. So we would run run, walk, run, walk, and then uh, stop him by the water stops and ask him what they have, and you have some nice trinkets and everything. One step at a time, sometimes running, sometimes walking, asking for goodies at the water tables along the route, and it was at one such table that Shirley and Larry caught up with another member of their team from Botswana who had some reassuring news about what it would take to make the 12-hour cutoff time and become official comrades finishers. We call him the, the pace master because he will have all these gadgets measuring every single aspect of the pace. So <laughs> we find him, he's um, enjoying himself, so we're like, oh, hi, Chilipi. So I was like, ah, oh, hi, hi, guys. So I was like, oh, okay, so what's happening? So he's like, ah, oh, no. No, man, we're almost there. Like, um, he's like, I've calculated from here, I can actually afford to walk all the way to the finish line. <laughs> so we're like, okay, let's go together. Maybe let's just try put in a little bit of a run. So we then joined forces. And then when you go to 80, we were left, I think, yeah, that year the route was like about 88 so when you got to eight, we're like, okay, this is TT time now. Imagine it's that Wednesday, we are doing our Wednesday 8Ks. All that was left was the short distance they'd done week in, week out on those Wednesday night training runs. The end of this epic journey was so close relative to how far Shirley and her friends had already come. And yet, there were still several miles to go, Seen from another perspective, the distance wasn't too much different from the 10K that had been Shirley's maximum for several years. It wasn't too long ago that she'd been satisfied running 10 or 12 kilometers and calling it a day. Now, that was just a small part of her larger goal, this gargantuan 88 hilly kilometers. And you never know why you do something as challenging as run so much further until you do. Few turns and then we arrived. We ran for our lives. It was like, oh my God, we ran. We sprinted for our lives just on that finishing line. And then 11 hours, 33 minutes later, we finished. And I remember just getting there and I just broke into tears. I was like, oh my God, I've done this. I have done this. I was just crying. I was like, this is so emotional. I've never, I mean, like I've, I've thought that I'd had races that were worth tears but that particular moment I just took that medal and I cried I was like I think I was just thinking you know what I could have stopped at 70 I could have I could have not finished oh god it was such an emotional day Shirley Motsiagabu had completed her first comrades She'd gone from goals of regaining fitness and health after childbirth to becoming an ultra runner, a pursuit she'd once seen as out of her league and one that many people see as crazy. But for Shirley and runners like her, 
This was the result of a methodical progression of seeing the next biggest challenge and wanting to meet it. And that's exactly what Shirley had done. She'd met the challenge of what is often called the ultimate human race. Now was a time to celebrate and bask in the deep satisfaction of overcoming this major challenge. But first, Shirley had to deal with the harsh reality of finishing an ultra, the post-race aches and pain. It's fair to say this is the adding insult to injury part of the sport. It is such a slow, painful walk to the car and... The unfortunate thing is nobody could do anything for you because when they touched you, it was painful. When they didn't touch you, it was still painful. So it was just, it was such an experience. But Shirley would not be deterred by these unkind facts about ultra running. This pain after you've already done something that felt impossible. And she was lured in by the special medal given to runners who complete comrades the year immediately following the first time they run the race, the back-to-back medal. Oh, at that point, it was, you know what, it was so painful, but I was like, oh my God, I think I should come back and do this back-to-back thing. <laughs> so next year, we were back at it again, and uh, we kept doing it until this year we went for number five. Yes, as of 2019, Shirley has completed five Comrades. She's also become the Comrades Ambassador for Botswana. We talked about the Ambassador Program in Kathy Hopkins' episode, too, because Kathy is the race's Canadian ambassador. These are foreign representatives of Comrades who promote the race within their country and help runners who are interested in racing there navigate the process of getting into and running Comrades. It can be a bit confusing and overwhelming for the uninitiated, and the ambassadors help pave the way. Shirley also has her own reasons for continuing her pursuit of running far. I think I'm just a junkie for sports, and uh, but running though, especially the the long distance running, I've actually realized that I, I really find my peace during my runs. Um, so some of these long runs that I clog in is also just to have that moment with myself and my head and my conversations really. Um, yeah, it initially started as a journey to just regaining my my pre baby pre-baby body and um, that goal came and after that you know I just had this relationship with running besides that over and above that I think I've also met wonderful people through running wonderful French I've made wonderful friendships that keep me going back this concludes our story of Shirley Mutsiagabu I want to thank Shirley for sharing her story from her home in Botswana to my closet in Boston. Like several of the women featured in this podcast, Shirley agreed to be part of this project before any episodes were created. And I really appreciate her willingness to take a chance on a stranger with only an idea. That's me. Her story is such a great testament to the fact that If you have the desire and are consistent in your efforts, and you're patient to let your abilities develop, you can reach goals that previously appeared impossible or out of reach. Have you ever experienced something like this, where you met a goal that you'd previously believed was out of your league? Please tell us about it. You can tweet to us or find us on Instagram at Strides Forward. And you can also always reach me, Cherie, through the website, stridesforwardpodcast.com. There, you'll also find full transcripts of all the shows, as well as show notes complete with all the pertinent links. And you'll find our runner's resources page there, which I'm going to return to in just a moment. But first, I just want to let you know that this episode marks a milestone for Strides Forward because it's our 10th. And originally, the season of Focusing on Comrades was going to end here. But we have two additional episodes we're excited to share, and they'll be published bi-weekly as usual. Now back to our Runner's Resources page, which is our ever-growing list of blogs, books, newsletters, podcasts, and magazines made by women, or about women, or both. And they mostly focus on running. 
Every episode, we highlight one of these resources, and this episode, we're focusing on Run Girl. This organization's tagline is Making Room for the Black Woman Distance Runner, with goals of promoting wellness, creating community, and providing running information and inspiration, as well as raising up and celebrating the voices and images of Black women in distance running. On the website, there are loads of articles in the categories of running, health and wellness, and lifestyle, written by a variety of Black female contributors from across the U.S. The platform also features an initiative called The Relay, which provides expert tips, tools, and insights from certified coaches, experts, and elite runners, including Olympian Mariel Hall, NCAA Division I runner Peyton Thomas, and Run Girl co-founders and certified running coaches Jasmine Nessie and Ashley Green, among others. You can find Run Girl at rungirl.co. That's R-U-N-G-R-L dot C-O. And I'll link to that in the show notes. Thank you to the Strides Forward team, whose voices you experience in other ways with this podcast. There's Cormac O'Regan, who makes all of the music you hear and does the sound design. And there's April Mariner of Bonfire Collaborative. She keeps the podcast branding and website looking amazing and up to date. You can find April at bonfirecollaborative.com. And of course, thank you, the listener. I really appreciate you tuning in. I love these stories, and I'm always excited to know that other people do, too. Until next time, this is Cherie wishing you satisfying strides forward. That strides forward. 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 Hear Her Sports is a podcast for everyone who loves stories by and about women striving to improve and make a difference in their lives. I am your host, Elizabeth Emery, a former professional cyclist. In every episode, I introduce a female athlete or woman in the business of sport through a thoughtful conversation about who they are and the terrific work they're doing. My guests and I explore the glorious and frustrating issues in sports, history, equity, training, nutrition, and so much more. Join us for inspiration, for community, and for love of being a strong athletic woman.